Assalamu alaikum hürmetli talabalar. Bugün sizler bilen Mırzaoğlu Bik namıda Özbekistan Milli Üniversitesi İngiliz Filologiası Kahvesi Dacenti İbrahim Can Usarif Fiyasi Tipologi Fanadan maruzalarını devam ettirildi. Ruhsat besenler maruzanı İngiliz dilde alıp olsak. Rahman. Dear students, today's theme is about the history of development of linguistic typology. The below are given the plan and the keywords of the lecture. So, comparative typological studies have a long history that goes back to the 11th and 12th centuries. The discovery of sea routes, different trade relations, as well as the diplomatic relations, naturally prompted the necessity of learning foreign languages and that paved the way to comparative typological study of languages in contact. In the old linguistic manuals on comparative typological investigations, it is noted that the history of the birth and development of comparative studies of languages is closely linked with the names of the German scholars brothers Friedrich Schlegel, August Schlegel and Humboldt who lived and created some major works on comparative studies of languages in the 17th and 18th centuries of which we will talk later. But tracing the phases of the historical development of linguistics and comparative linguistics in particular lays a path solid ground to state that as earlier as in the fall of the 11th century a great scholar and thinker of his time Mahmoud Kashgari was born at the beginning of the 11th century in Balasagun near the town of Tukmak of the now Kyrgyzir created an, a fundamental encyclopedic works on the origin and types of the Turkic tribes and ethnic groups and their languages. Mahmoud Kashgari, our ancestor, studies scarcely the origin and history of the Turkic people, their customs, traditions, culture, and mode of life. So his prime attention being always focused on the languages spoken by the folk of the time. Mahmoud Kashgari, having uh, thoroughly studied the Turkic civilization of the time, created two major works on linguistics which may be considered and are surely to be considered the earliest fundamental linguistic research works on the comparative study of languages in the history of general linguistics. The works were the following. Jawahur un Nahav Felugat Turk Syntactical rules of the Turkic language, in which Nahu means syntax, and the second one is Devana Lugat Turk, Dictionary of Turkic Words. It is a great pity that the first work by Mahmud Kashgari has not reached our time, but the second one has. As to the whereabouts of the first work, there is no information at all, and it is still unknown to the linguistic world. The second work is of extreme importance both from the linguistic and literary points of views, for it provides reader with detailed data on the origin, civilization, traditions and customs of the Twani, Turkic tribes scattered all uh, over territory beginning with the minor Asia and ending with China. In his work, the author described the following 20 kinds of the Turkic tribes and their languages. Bajanak, Kipchak, Ogus, Yaman, Bashkir, Basmil, Kai, Yabaku, Tatar, Kyrgyz, Chigil, Tuhsi, Yagma, Igrak, Taruk, Jumul, Uyghur, Tangut, Chinese, and Tagach. As Mahmoud Kashkari witnessed the Uzbek language, which has or which was then originally referred to the Chigil group of languages, the latter being called Turkish, and then or Chigatai language, even later in the 15th 
century. Historically, in the 16th century, only after the Uzbek tribes of the Mauron Nahor had been joined by the nomadic Uzbek tribes, did the people start to be called Uzbeks and their language Uzbek. Devana Lugatruk by Kashkari attracted the attention of the learned people of the time. Only in the 1915-1917, the Devana was published in three volumes as a fundamental work reflecting the spirit and culture and languages of the people living in Mavarunahar and in Istanbul. German Orientalist Brackelman translated the work into German. Later it was translated into Turkic, Turk, Turkic language by Basim Atalay. Recently a linguist Mutalibab has translated Devanaluga Turk into Uzbek from the original. Mahmoud Kashkari wrote uh, the Devanaluga Turk up and uh, 1076, 1077, as it was a strong tradition to write scientific works in the Arabic language by the time Devano was also written in the Arabic language. The work consists of two parts, introduction and diction. The introduction runs about the reasons and the necessity of creating the Devano and the material the author had collected for the work. It also contains valuable pieces of information about the structure of the work and the Turkic word structure as well as the materials relating to the Turkic tribes and ethnic groups, all of which is of great importance for both comparative and a real linguistics. At the end of the introduction, he gives his scientific theoretical postulates and conclusions he had arrived at upon the investigated problem. The introduction is rich in lingua -soci uh, sociological and uh, lingua stylistical data of the languages compared. The main part of the Devanu runs about the meanings of more than 6,000 Turkic words explained commented on in the Arabic language. So we may conclude that Mahmoud Kashkari's works on the comparative study of the Turkic languages as early as in the 11th century witnessed that Mahmoud Kashkari is to be duly considered to be the founder of the comparative typological linguistics, and the priority of the foundation of comparative linguistics lies with him and not with Humboldt who lived and walked six centuries later, which prompts the need of rewriting history of comparative typological research, strictly observing the priority of foundation of the fund fundamental sciences. As we see, the comparative typological studies go back to the 11th century. Since that time, it has been developing on and on till nowadays. If we have a glance at Europe, the comparative approaches to languages in contact started much later than those in Central Asia. Com the comparative typological studies in Europe are closely linked with the names of such Russian scholars as Dombrovsky, Vostokov, German scholars as Grimm, Bob, Humboldt, Brothers Schlegels, and Steintel, Mesli, Das Scholar, as Rasmus Ross and many others. Today, comparative typological studies are closely linked with the names uh, of such well-known scholars as Mishaninov, Greenberg, Osgood, Arakin, Sherba, Vinagrada, Uspansky, Rozdesvansky, Klimov, V. Melnikov, Konstnelson, Yarsova, Gorodetsky, Buranov, Yusupov, Abdazizov, Mamatov, Ashurova, Hashimov, and many others. Let's consider some of the investigations by the above mentioned scholars. In the 18th century, a Russian scholar Dombrovsky, 
who was a specialist in Slavonic languages, created some works of great importance for comparative linguistics. So, origin of Slavonic languages, and the second one, Slavonic languages. In these works, Dombrovsky, for the first time in the Russian linguistics, gave the comparative characteristics of the Slavonic languages, their origin being of the prime attention for him. So we can call him the founder of the comparative method in Russian linguistics. Another prophetic Russian scholar, Vostokov, carried some serious comparative analysis of the Slavonic languages. He is the author of very serious comparative research work, Comparative Study of Russian, Polish, and Old Slavonic. Here is another brilliant work on the com comparative linguistics by Vostokov, description of the Russian and Slavonic manuscripts. The latter is kept at the Rumyansa Museum. A well-known Dutch scholar, Rasmus Christian Rusk, carried out some interesting scientific research work on Islandic languages, so, which re resulted in the creation of the following works. Investigation of the origin of the old Icelandic language, the second on the Frakian group of languages. A German scholar Friedrich Schlegel was the first to give a systematic comparative study of different languages in his work on the language and wisdom of the Indians. In, his, in this work Schlegel, for the first time, paid attention to the dissimilarities of the structure of the languages compared. So, he distinguished the two language types. The first languages with affixes, so, and the second one, flactive languages. His brother, August Schlegel, further developed this classification of languages by dividing languages into three types. The first, languages without a grammatical structure. The second, affixational language. And the third one is flactive languages. August Schlegel concluded that the Chinese and the languages of Indochina had to be classified into a special group of languages because there was no flexion in them, the grammatical relations being expressed by the help of word order. August Schlegel spoke of the following language types. Synthetic, so early languages, and analytical languages of the lay. Comparative study of languages in full and complete form is observed in the works of a German scholar Wilhelm von Humboldt, whose works mark a new phase of the development of the former. Humboldt is the author of some works on comparative typological research. The first one, on the differences of structure of human languages and its impact on the spiritual development of man, and the second one on the languages of Kawi in the island Java. Humboldt knew many languages, including the languages of American Indians and Polynesian languages. It is Humboldt who, for the first time, gave a more or less complete typological classification of languages. He distinguished four types of languages. The first one, isolating languages like Chinese, the second agglutinative languages like Turkic ones, the third flective lang languages like Indo-European, the fourth incorporative languages with word, word sentences like the Chukot language. For Humboldt, language was an emanation or expression of the spirit of human beings. Languages was in his understanding, a psychology of the people speaking it. And it was Humboldt's mistake that he thought that the typology of languages reflect different cultural level of development of the people. In his understanding, the flective languages have a strictly correct form of expression, that is why he declared them to be the top of language research other languages being at the lower phases of development. Francis Bob, another German linguist, 
one of those scholars who introduced the method of comparative study of languages, divided the languages into two types as to the syllabic structure of words. The first one, monosyllabic, with roots of one syllable, and the second one is polysyllabic, with roots of many syllables, so seven languages. The successor and disciple of Humboldt, Steintel, made a bold step forward into elaboration of the typological theory. He worked out syntactical criteria for the classification of languages. Mesley, who continued the work of Steintel, gave an original classification of languages as to the first, as to the order of borders in a sentence and the inner structure of words. An American linguist, Edward Sapir, gave a strong criticism of the morphological classification of languages, calling it evolutionist because it presupposes evolution of the structure of the isolating languages interflective, in which only the technique of word structure was taken into consideration only. He offered his own classification of languages based on the three criteria. The technique of morpheme building, the degree of synthesis of meanings of morpheme in a word, corrector of grammatical process. Sipi classifies languages into the first, simple pure relational languages without affixes, the second, complicated pure relational languages with affixes, the third, simple mixed relational languages expressing the syntactical relations in a pure form with the help of agglutination or, or fusion, and the fourth one is complicated mixed relational languages in which the meaning of morpheme may be changed by the help of affixes or in a sound alternation. In the history of typological studies, Mishaninov's classification is original. Is a syntactical one. Uh, his is a syntactical one based on pure syntactical criteria. The first, languages of a passive structure, languages of agative structure, languages of nominative structure, and languages of possessive structure. The above mentioned classifications, as a seen from the above described, carry either a morphological or a syntactical character and may be called gnoseological. There are some other classifications of the languages on the basis of certain kinship between languages compared, which are known as genealogical classifications, according to which language families and relative languages are distinguished and studied. Following Mishanino's typology, his successors have worked out different theories on the comparative typological studies of languages. For example, Malnick worked out his theory of determination as a leading grammatical tendency in a language which explains the changes in the grammatical structure of this or that language. Typological studies were further continued in the theory by Buranov, who offered a method of analysis by the help of typological categories of the type. The below are given the types of typological categories so offered by Buranov. A detailed model of comparative typological research was offered by Professor Yusupov, who made a whole system approach to the languages compare. In his fundamental research work, Professor Yusupov made an attempt at working out and offering some very relevant features of typological constants as to the levels of languages hierarchy, beginning with the phonetic phonological level and ending in the textological level. Professor Yusupov offered the following methods of comparative typological analysis as to the language hierarchy. The first, methods of comparing languages in their abstract systems 
The second is methods of comparing grammatical system of non-related languages. The third is method of comparing lexical systems of non-related languages. The fourth one is methods of comparing word building systems of non-related languages. The fifth is methods of comparing phraseological systems of non-related languages. The sixth is methods of comparing languages in speech systems. And the last one, the seventh is methods of comparing languages in textual systems. The above mentioned models of comparative typological analysis offered above by different scholars lay a solid ground for further investigations and elaborate and enrich the comparative typological theory with new linguistics data and pave the way for new horizons in this sphere of scientific research activities. That's all about today's lecture. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.